uh, I was going in one direction on Monday, and then things kind of got shifted on me as I began to pray a little more and got several confirmations in my heart and around me that I, I wanted to, the last couple times on Wednesday night, we've been talking about the wonderful counselor, you know, out of Isaiah 9, and but I, what I want to do, I felt like I was supposed to continue this and kind of go a little deeper with it. Um, because I think if there's one question that people have all the time, it's how do I hear God? Right? How do I hear God? What does God sound like? Right? What do I need to do? How do I need to do this? Right? I mean, Google can only get you so far. Right? <laughs> Google, it can help you. I mean, I mean, on the on on the on the eighth day, God created Google. All right, He did, and Google's good, and, and we can and we certainly can 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 get a lot of information. But there's some things. Listen, you just need a word from the Lord on. You just need a word from God, right? And we're all learning and trying to uh, develop ourselves to hear God. In John chapter 17. Verse 3, and it's just, I love John 17, it's one of my, I mean, the Bible is great, but I mean, it's one of my favorite passages of Scripture in John 17 with Jesus' high priestly prayer, and as he starts to pray for his disciples, and starts praying for all of us, and it's just amazing, but in the third verse of John 17, it says this, and this is what? Eternal life. Now, this is a life-changing Scripture, because a lot of people think eternal life is about going to heaven. And the Bible says, this is what eternal life is. Knowing God. Jesus said that. He said, this is, what is eternal life? We have to ask that question. Uh, eternal life is about quality and not quantity. The day you got born again, eternal life started. Jesus, over in 1 John, he that hath the Son has life. He that hath not the Son does not have life. That's that word zoe. Same, same word, eternal life. Right? And it is, it is qu qu quantity. But, but Jesus is trying to get across to us that this is what life as God would want you to have. That's what it really means. Life, uh, the zoe, right? That word life, the zoe of God. It, it, it's, it's the life that God intends for you to have. It's the life of God. It's, it's the God kind of life. Right? Eternal life is peace. Eternal life is joy. Eternal life is having relationships. It's all part of eternal life. I mean, we're going to be, think about that a second. We're going to know each other forever. I'm going to know you forever. And we're going to be, we're going to, listen, we're going to rule and reign on this earth forever. That's good. That means me and you. You will see my ugly mug for the rest of all eternity. And it's my 30-year-old mug, which I may not want to go back there, just honestly. I was looking at the pictures. Maybe I need to go right now. You know what I'm saying? So Jesus said, this is eternal life that, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So I, I want you to see this, and we're not going to get very far tonight, of course, uh, but anyway... Everything that God does, and I know you know this, but I'm going to continue to reiterate foundational things with this. Everything God does, He does in the context of relationship. Everything that God does, He does in the, concept, in the, in the context of relationship. That's the basic distinction between Christianity and other religions. What's the base? What's the, you know, we got Jesus and Him being the Son of God and some things, but this is the deal. Christianity uh, is not like other religions. It doesn't have just a simple code of ethics or rules or laws that one must follow. It offers a direct spiritual experience with a loving God that is alive. Okay, A loving God that's what? Alive. You have a God that is personal and you got a God that's alive. And in alive, anything alive is going to be communicated. Right? The Bible says in Galatians 4, 6, you're, we're all sons, right? And, and because you're sons, Paul said, he said, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, 
crying out, Abba, Father. Crying out, what? Abba, Father. So, so the Spirit in you, right, is crying out, Abba, intimacy, affection, right? And this is where we, 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 don't, the, we don't get, Jesus came to give you and I life and what? Life more abundantly. Right? He doesn't want us to have death operating in our lives. Now, I'm not talking about, we're all going to die. All right? I'm talking about the effects of death. God doesn't want us to be experiencing the despondency and despair and the confusion and the chaos that the world experiences. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I know Jesus. I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to sleep really well. You know why? Because Jesus is my Lord. Come on, it's time for some people to just be able to sleep in this room. It's time for you to sleep. Quit trying to work it out and just go to bed. Just go to sleep. And Jesus has you. And he's got your situation. So, well, you wake up tomorrow. And you know what? It may be rain tomorrow. It's supposed to snow at some point. Right? I don't care. It doesn't matter. Jesus is Lord. But the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and what? Life more abundant. So many people, this is the, we're being robbed of the abundant life because we're being distracted or we have a lack of knowledge that God is speaking and we can hear from Him. We can hear from God. He's alive. Right? He's alive. Right? Blessed are you. Remember that Matthew chapter 16? Uh, Jesus walks up to him and says, uh, Hey, boys, uh, who, do you, who, who do men say that I am? He said, man, man, you're, some are saying you're Jeremiah, you're, you're Elijah, you're, 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 you're one of these prophets. I mean, back from the dead. So Jesus said these words. Who do you, what? You say that I am. And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus said these words. He said, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. But my father, which is in heaven. Peter hooked in to a realm that he heard. Now, he was an Old Testament guy. Remember, all these guys in the, in, in the Gospels, that was all Old Testament. That was before. And he picked up on something. He tapped into the cloud. He got some information from the cloud. Right? And, it, and, and you know, what, what's the next thing he says? What, what's the next part of that verse? Flesh and blood's not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And then what's the next thing he says? Upon this what? Rock, I'm going to what? Build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A revelation, hearing revelation is how he's going to build. Yes, the, the, the revelation that Jesus is Lord, who Jesus is. He's the Christ. He's the Messiah. But it's the hearing or the revelation from heaven is how God is going to build his church. How he's going to build the church is people that are hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church. So it's, it's vital. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the what? Okay, you guys know this. But that word, word of God, is not information. This is what you would say, logos, information. I'm giving you logos right now. That's not the word that's used there. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rhema. That's the spoken word of God in that moment for your situation, for this situation. It's hearing from heaven. Faith comes by hearing and hearing from heaven. That's how faith arises in us. We can sit and read this book. All You can have this, this stuff in you and you can know every verse, right? You can have it and you got to because the Holy Spirit has, has to have something to draw from. Right? It's got to have something in the well here. 
So I'm putting stuff in the well. But you can know all about this, but ne- be, be tone deaf to what the Spirit's saying. Because it's the moment that the Spirit speaks to you in your, in your life, the moment that he, that, that he speaks to you is when faith is, is in birth inside of you and I. That's the moment that faith arises. Oh, I can do whatever. I can do that. Or I can do this. Or, you know what, that's a word for me. Right? That's a word for me. I heard that. You could hear me preaching. And all of a sudden, man, you're not here. Listen, I've been preaching all kinds of stuff. But you have zoned in on one word that I had said. The rhema came to you at that moment for your life. That's what the Holy Spirit does. So hearing from heaven, it's important that I hear. I have to discern his voice. I need to discern his voice, right? The sheep, what? Hear my voice. I want you to know that, right? Now, we have relegated many times. The enemy has convinced us, and not so much. I know we know these things, but he's convinced Christians that God only speaks to the pulpit people. And he only speaks to the people that are real spiritual. We can all hear God's voice. And I want you to understand something. If the enemy has a voice, and we hear people talking about, well, the enemy, the enemy, I'm, I'm feeling attacked from the enemy. I, I've got all these wrong. We talk, a lot of times we talk more about the enemy than we talk about God. But if the enemy has a voice, why wouldn't God have a voice? The Bible says in Genesis 3, 1, right? The serpent said. I mean, Luke 4, the devil said to Jesus. Right? But we are introduced in our Bible, in the first page of our Bibles, we're introduced to a speaking God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the waters. And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. Over the waters. Boom. And God said. And you start reading. And God said. And God said. And God said. We read all throughout the Old Testament. God speaking through burning bushes and prophets and, and priests and kings and, and God speaking through through uh, through signs and wonders. I mean he's speaking, right? But what's so amazing is that you and I in the new covenant, the Spirit of God lives in us and He's speaking to us inside. But are we paying attention? Right? Take my hand and let's and let's do life together. However, that says that. I'm the worst on that kind of stuff, right? But take my hand and let's do life together. Man, I love that. Because that's what God wants. Right? So God has a voice. Look what it says right here. I just want to lay this out and we'll. We'll pick this up. We'll go a little bit and we'll pick it up next week. But Psalms 29.4. Check this out. Uh, in 29, it's all different places in 29. But look right here. It says the voice of the Lord is what? God has a voice. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. You know what? God is so committed to try to communicate with us. He does something amazing. I want you to see this. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to Psalm 19. Because I want you to see it. Find it. And I know that can go on the screen. But I want you to see it with your, with, you, with your eyes. God is so committed to speak that he has given a general revelation of himself. Psalm 19, verse 1. It says the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament, right? The firmament. The expanse of heaven shows his handiwork. Now look at this. So it's here. Day 
unto day, it what? It utters speech. And night unto night reveals knowledge. Look what it says in verse 3. There is no speak nor language where their voice is not what? You ever been captivated by a sunrise or a sunset? That was God's general, general revelation speaking to you. He said, I so want to communicate with people, even people that don't have the Spirit of God, I'm still speaking to them. Right? I don't have to wait on a sunset for God to speak to me. But for people that don't know Him, God has set things up around Him or around them that reveals Himself to them and will speak to them. So there's a general revelation that's given to us. That's how, God, that's how much God's committed to speak to you and I. He so wants to talk to us. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint the sky. I'm going to put that mountain there. Right? I'm going to put that tree there. I'm going to, I mean, come on, there's nothing like a baby being born that would speak to you about life and who God is, right? I mean, it's, it's everywhere. There is truly, there is, God is everywhere and in anything if you and I would just listen. But what's so cool? I got him inside of me. You got him inside of you. And you know what? He can lead us every day. God is committed. So as a Christian though, I can have a specific guidance from the Lord, not just a general revelation. Right? I can have a specific guidance that comes to me. So, I want you to understand that. I mean, I know we talk about it all the time. But I want you to get this in your heart. That God lives in me. His voice. Listen, his voice can be heard. The sheep hear his voice. God's speaking. It's just whether I'm hearing or not. Now, my goal is to show you, I guess, in the weeks to come, it seems, that how's that going to happen? Because everybody's waiting for God to speak out there to, to this, this way. It don't work that way. God speaks from here out, not out in. Old Testament revelation was outside in. New Testament revelation is inside out. We're waiting for voices. Angelic. And I'm not against. Maybe the angel does show up. I don't know. I mean, I'm open to that. How about you? Anybody open to angelic visitations? I mean, I'm open for that. Praise the Lord. It happened in the, in the book of Acts. Right? But at the end of the day, I'm not... I'm not looking for the spectacular, but I am. Listen, hearing from God is supernatural. It's very rarely spectacular, but it's always supernatural. Right? The Spirit of God lives in you. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 2. You have to follow me upstairs. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I know we've been here before. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Oh my, that's so good. Yo, that's really good right there too. All right, sorry, I got caught up in my notes. First Corinthians 2, look what it says right here. Let's start here in verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10, but. Aren't you glad for the but? But God has revealed them unto us through his what? So the things that I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man, God now reveals those things to you and I. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things or the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? I don't know your thoughts. You know your thoughts. That's what he's saying. That word spirit there, if you notice, it's, it's, it's not capitalized. You see that? It's not capitalized. Right? 
verse 11. There, for what man knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of man which is him? Even so, no one knows the things or the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. What's it say? But the spirit who is what? From God. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. I want you to hear that. I want you to hear this. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. But the spirit who is from God. That we might. What's the next word? Know. That you can know the things, you can know this. This word know right here, it actually means this. It means to, um, the word know means to be cognizant or aware of a fact or specific piece of information. To possess knowledge or information about. That you can have information about the things God has given to you. What's he given to you? He's given you eternal life. What's he given to you? He's given you an inheritance in Jesus. He's given you things to know. He said, I want you to know it. He said, listen, the thought. no one knows the thoughts of man. You only know it. Just like the Spirit of God knows the thoughts of God. Therefore, you and I have now the Spirit of God that we can know, be cognizant, be aware, have information, possess knowledge that God wants us to have about our life, about our situation. He cares about us. Are we consulting? Now, I'll close here. If you'll go with me to Ephesians chapter 3. I want you to see this one. Ephesians chapter 3. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3. If you look here in verse... Uh, we'll back up to verse 14. And just because we'll catch the prayer the Apostle Paul prays. He prays in a prayer in Ephesians 1. He prays a prayer in Ephesians 3. These are good scripture actually to go and read. But look what it says here in 14. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. From whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Now look what he says. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might. Look what it says now. Through his what? In the where? Where's the spirit at? He's in the inner man. You're strengthened with might through your inner man. The inner man. Through the inner man. Through the inner man. So quit looking for his voice out there. And start looking for his voice in here. This is where it happens. It's in the inner man. It's in the inner man. And you and I can be strengthened with might through his spirit that's in the inner man. I want you to know this because again, quit looking out there. He's speaking. And that voice comes to you and I'll show you. It comes to you all kinds of different ways. You know that upset chaotic feeling you have on the inside of you about that decision you're trying to make you need to listen to that because he's speaking you know that peace you got in your heart about that situation you need to listen to that he's speaking you know that joy you have in your heart right all of a sudden, man, you think about something and it's just something gets joyous. You feel it leaping. You need to listen because he's speaking. We're waiting, man, for thunder and lightning. Waiting for somebody to give me a word. Oh, I hope today that the pastor has a word for me. I hope he has a word. Give me a word. Give me a word. Right? Now, hold on. I, I, and, and we'll show you that. Because God will give you a word through that. But quit waiting for Sunday morning hearing a word. Why don't we go to bed tonight hearing a word? When we wake up tomorrow morning hearing a word. Let's walk tomorrow hearing a word. Right? 
I start listening to what he's trying to tell you. What he's trying to tell me. I'm preaching this message to me just I am to you. Right? God is a speaking God. And he is speaking. You are his child. You're not an orphan. Jesus said, I will not leave you an orphan. You are not without provision. You are not without resources. He said, I'm going to send the helper to you. And that helper is going to go on the inside of you. And he's going to lead you. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Right? We're being led. You guys all right tonight? Hallelujah. I'm done. Praise the Lord. We'll pick it up there next week. Amen.